You guys, look at this sweet potato patch. We are so excited with how well these look above ground. And today we're gonna find out whether or not we should be excited about how they look below ground because it is time to dig up these sweet potatoes. The first thing that we need to do is cut all of these vines just above the ground, pull them out of here so we can pull up the woven ground cover and get to the soil. We're gonna leave about three inches or so of the stems so that we know where each of the plants is. So when we're digging, we know where we're supposed to be digging. I'm gonna rake the, the plants back so that we get them back to the where the main plant is. And then Sarah's gonna come through with a hand pruner and actually cut the plants just above the ground. Now here in the Missouri Ozarks, we have such a long growing season that we really need to keep track of how many days our uh, plants like sweet potatoes are growing because it's easy for us to not harvest on time when they're ready because the season just gets so long. We're actually not supposed to have our first frost until the middle or the end of October. And so things like sweet potatoes where you know, in colder parts of the country, you wait until they die back. If we waited until they died back, they'd be way too overgrown and have the potential of being eaten by bugs and rodents and things. So these vines look still pretty green, but sweet potatoes should be harvested around 110 days. We're at 118 days. So we're gonna be digging them based on how long they've been growing so that hopefully they're not eaten by bugs and rodents under the ground. Now we've gotten a lot of questions about how we're growing our sweet potatoes this year with the woven ground cover. A lot of you have been concerned because normally when you grow sweet potatoes on just bare ground, the vines themselves as they grow will grow more roots down into the ground. And in theory, you would get more sweet potatoes by allowing all of those roots to turn into sweet potatoes too. The reason I say in theory is because in reality, the way it is, is even if you were to get sweet potatoes on those little roots, uh, they'd be so far behind your main plants that you'd never be able to harvest both of them. You'd either have to pick harvesting the main plants or waiting until all of those little roots turned into big sweet potatoes. And so, uh, you know, you really can't do them both. So it's really not a big deal to do it this way and not let them reroot into the ground. In fact, it's a lot easier to pull them up. And this way, once we get them out of here, we can harvest the nice big sweet potatoes from the main plants. Now this is the first year that we're growing them this way with the woven ground cover. We think it's going to work well, but we won't know until we actually start digging them. The other thing this year that we did for the first time was start all of our own sweet potato slips ourselves. This winter, we actually went to the local health food store, bought some organic sweet potatoes, uh, two varieties, one called Garnet and one called Jewel. And we actually started all of these plants off just those couple sweet potatoes that we bought from the health food stores. In total, we planted about 50 to 60 slips. So it was two 50 foot rows of sweet potatoes. So I think that's going to be a good harvest for us. Got one more plant to cut. I'll be able to start pulling all of these vines out. All right, we've got this first row of plants cut off at the ground. We have a second row of plants over here. We're gonna rake those on top of this pile that we have now, cut that second row. This is a ton of vines, so it's gonna be a big job to get them all out of here.
Okay, all the vines are cut, raked, the irrigation lines have been pulled. I think we should rake this to the middle and then rake from that end to the middle and then try to yank them all out. Well, the vines are out of here. Now we just need to pull up the weed fabric that we have here and get started digging. It's actually sprinkling a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't start downpouring. We're just gonna work through the sprinkles. Feels kinda nice as we're working hard. It's nice and cool to have some sprinkles. So, on with the next phase of the project. all ready to start digging our potatoes. Isn't it absolutely wonderful that when we pull back this weed fabric, there are no weeds here. There's no competition for these sweet potato slips. They just were able to grow and grow. Hopefully we'll have to see what's underground. Well, a couple things that I want you to notice. The first one is just look how dry the ground is here. And this is actually on purpose. We haven't been watering back here because we want the ground to be dry and definitely not muddy when we harvest these sweet potatoes. You can also see that the ground has cracked in some areas and has kind of been pushed up. We think that there are sweet potatoes underneath these cracks and you can see that they are pretty far away from the plant here. That's why we've made sure to take away quite a few rows of this woven weed fabric. So we're just excited to see where these sweet potatoes are and how many there are of them. All right, so let's get digging and see how many we have under here. I'm excited. All right, we're gonna get ready to start digging now. I was looking online a little bit about how far from the plants to start digging because in the past I've kind of made the mistake I think of starting too close to the plant and then stabbing some of the sweet potatoes with the uh, potato fork so uh, everything I read said about 18 inches from the plant so that's about where I'm going to start and hopefully we won't damage too many but if we do we'll just have to eat those first. All right, I'm gonna dig through a little bit with my hand and see what's going on here. You can see some roots way out here. So there's a nice one. Got a little bit of bug damage on it though. I don't like seeing that. The ground is a lot harder than I would have thought it is. I thought it would be since we tilled here this in the spring. We've got about a third of the road dug up so far and I'll be honest with you guys I'm disappointed um, they're not producing nearly as well as I had hoped and the ground is so hard that I can barely dig these up 
uh, our native, we were just growing these in our native Missouri soil. And you can see that, I mean, this is just rock hard clay. Um, I knew it would be hard, but I had figured since I tilled this spring that it would be, you know, somewhat loose, loose enough to be able to, to dig these up. But yeah, I can only get my potato fork into the ground about four inches. So we're trying to do the best that we can just digging these up, but I'll be honest with you guys, this is, in my opinion, more work than it's worth to dig these up. Uh, we're gonna do it because we planted them and, and we wanna get at least what we can, uh, but doing it exactly this way again in the future, I don't see us doing that. So we're gonna do our best to get what we can off of each plant. Uh, the other problem is because the ground is so hard that uh, a lot of them are grown in such a way that I can't get the fork deep enough to get completely under them. So then they're breaking, which you know I, I'll have to do some research. I don't know if that's gonna be a big deal when they cure, if that'll kind of crust over and be okay, or if that means that those are going to rot and, and not be okay. So. Um, we're trying to be honest with you guys as we do things here on the farm, show you what works and what doesn't work. And unless something changes drastically while we're digging these up, uh, so far I would say this is one of those things that is not working. That was not fun, digging up these sweet potatoes. That was a ton of work. Uh, in the end, out of the first row, which is all we dug up for today was the first row, we ended up with 70 pounds of sweet potatoes out of that first 50 foot row. In the end, we are very pleased with the amount of sweet potatoes that we got out of that first row. We don't know though if 70 pounds out of a 50 foot row is a good harvest for sweet potatoes. We haven't grown them enough times to know whether we should be expecting more sweet potatoes out of a 50 foot row. So we'd sure like some feedback on that from you guys. The other thing that we'd like some feedback from you guys about is the crazy shape of a lot of these sweet potatoes. I mean, a lot of them are super long and skinny like this and to be honest, I'm not really sure what we're gonna do with them. So even though we ended up with 70 pounds, I'm not sure, you know, something like this, if, if that's gonna be usable. We might be able to peel it and use it for soups or something like that, but it's definitely not, you know, something you're gonna have on your Thanksgiving plate. I'd say about 50%, maybe a little bit less of the sweet potatoes that we harvested are like a good normal bake, potato size or right. a normal size and shape that you would find in the grocery store. So like Kevin said, we're not really sure why that happened. And we're thinking that it is gonna go back to how compact and, and clay and hard our soil is. But maybe you guys have more insight on that. Yeah, yeah, my gut really tells me that they grew really long like this because the soil was so hard that they could grow long, but they couldn't grow real big because they couldn't push the soil out. 
Does that make sense to those of you who have grown a lot of sweet potatoes in the past? It just may be that we have terrible soil for growing sweet potatoes. There are parts of the country, like down in Mississippi, where Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead live, they have amazing soil for growing sweet potatoes. So maybe that sandy soil is really the trick. Right. So one thing we were talking about while we were digging these today is possibly tilling in a bunch of sand into the garden before next growing season and trying again. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think that that is something that would help? In general, we feel like the experiment that we did with the woven ground cover was a success. Exactly. The weed fabric did exactly what it was supposed to do and kept away all of the weeds, which was fantastic. Right. These would have been even harder to dig had they been just completely surrounded by weeds. So uh, that part did make a big difference. One thing we haven't talked about yet is the curing process for these sweet potatoes. Now that we have them out of the ground, there's one more step before we can store them long term and before we can really start eating them. So now that we dug them up, we'll be moving them into uh, our guest cabin, which is actually where we cure a lot of the things that we harvest. A couple of weeks ago, we put our butternut squash in there or the Canada crookneck squash when we harvested those, but those are now done. Those are done curing. We can move those uh, into a cooler location. Uh, the guest cabin stays fairly warm because no one is in it and there's no AC or anything. So it stays fairly warm and fairly humid, which is exactly what you want for sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes should cure from about a week to two weeks, depending on the conditions, but they won't be sweet until they're done curing. If we were to take these in the house right now and eat them, they won't be very sweet at all. It's during that curing process that the starches in the potatoes turn to sugar and make them sweet. This is the third year that we've tried growing sweet potatoes now uh, and then one year that we grew them in a raised bed. They actually did pretty well in the raised bed because we had looser soil in there but in general we're trying to get away from raised beds because we feel like it's pretty limiting on the amount that we can grow and since we're really trying to grow things on a scale to produce a year's worth of food at a time uh, the raised beds are kind of limiting for us. So we would like some advice from you guys. If any of you have successfully grown sweet potatoes, not that this was a failure by any means. Right. I mean, this still gave us quite a bit of sweet potatoes, but if you have grown them and ended up with just a beautiful harvest of all nicely shaped sweet potatoes, we would love to hear what your secret is. Or if you just think you know, you know, what we did wrong, uh, let us know that as well. So you guys, one thing we'd like to do is to really bring to you our successes and our failures. Not that this was really a failure, but it sure wasn't a giant success. No, we're not ever gonna like win a prize with a sweet potato <laughs> that looks like this. <laughs> what prize could we win for that sweet potato? I don't know, longest sweet potato maybe? I don't know, best sweet potato branch? Right. Uh, so, you guys, we're just trying to be real with you and show you uh, when we're not the best at everything also. So please make sure that you have subscribed if you haven't already. That way you'll be notified when we put out our new videos. And don't forget, the best way that you can help us is by sharing our videos on all of your social media. Make sure that you share it so that other people who love this kind of lifestyle and want to learn how to grow their own food can enjoy our videos as well. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.